Hey guys, my name is Alex. I have been building trucks, cars, ambulances, vans, all into adventure rigs to support my traveling lifestyle for a really long time. I've made every mistake I feel like there is to make out there and I'm gonna show you guys the right way that I do things so that it lasts a long time, you don't wind up overspending, and you get the rig that you really want and need when it's all said and done. Most of this was shot six months ago. The van is now almost done. This video series will start modern day, go back in time to when I first got it and was doing the build out, and then come back to modern day to show you the finished product, let you know my final thoughts, what I learned along the way, and give you any pro tips I have at the end. If you enjoy this, please do all the usual YouTube metric stuff, but mostly I'll be putting Amazon links throughout this series in the bottom. Please, whether or not you're buying something that I'm recommending in these videos, just use the portal, do your normal shopping, and 3% of whatever you get will wind up coming my way. That goes a long way towards helping me just keep doing this stuff. I found these awesome wall cubbies to take advantage of. Here it is. They are beautiful and I hope you enjoy it. Forgive the angle, but this is the final product in my van. These cubbies, uh, they look stock. They function as if they were always here, but they are a brainchild that I had. I had never seen anyone do it before. Maybe someone has, but this is how I decided to crack eggs and make an omelet and I hope you enjoy it. Main features are a hidden subwoofer behind my bed, which completely fixes the Ford sound system and makes it sound fantastic. Stuff cubby with a flexible bungee cord, so whatever you need, you can just jam in there. And a comfortable home where I was able to jam my entire electronic systems with all my controllers up there. Finally, it gave me a place for my electronic extending retracting bed. Obviously, I still need to make the memory foam cover, but let's go back six months, start at the beginning, and see how we got here. I am super stoked on these three cubbies right here. They are going to wind up being storage. One thing I have to do for sure is relocate that. That is the impact sensor for the full side curtain airbag. About to run out of daylight, but notice what is gone. Sensor, I relocated up into here where it's out of the way, pulled the wire, cut that bracket, cut that bracket, and it is still anchored to something which is connected to the outside wall. So it'll still get that really hard impact that triggers it in the event of a crash. Should be fine if the next clip is me with a bunch of blown up airbags. Well, now that I have the impact sensor out of the way, I'm looking at the back of the panel that goes right there. What's interesting here is if I look really closely, you can just see right there, there's a corner marker. So clearly this block was actually supposed to be there. Don't really care, you're coming off either way. But these are pretty decent templates for the openings that I'm going to wind up with where I make my cubbies. My cubbies, right, would come up like this. That shape might come in handy. These peel right off, they're gonna come off either way. You can see in the factory they peel and stick, so I can get them off intact. I can use the corner markers again to see where they're supposed to be when I go to cut this out. So I'm going to ground truth this back in the van and see if I can use these to lay out my cubbies and get the kind of front face figured out on the bench. That would help me to make that shape and stick and glue it on the bench and know that it's gonna go correctly back into the van. I'd rather do that than build them into the van. Well, you know what they say about assumptions. That is pretty much a dead ringer for the size of the opening. Middle's bigger, this side's the exact same. So now what I know is I actually want to use this as the outside 
of my box and I am going to build the cubby to this outside dimension, ground truthing it here, but I am going to cut that black sheet in by about half an inch. So that way you're not gonna see the edge of my work. You're actually just gonna have a little bit of a shadow box effect and anything that's in here can't just like fall out. It'll get caught on that dummy lip. Ultimately, I'm probably going to have some sort of mesh or bungee deal in here anyway, or this might be my electrical cabinet. I haven't decided yet, but very important that you double, triple check. As I kind of explore around the van, one thing I'm noticing is that these connectors, these ribs that stiffen the outside from the inside, they're not tack welded or anything like that because probably the uneven heating on a sheet of metal would cause distortions. What they are is spray foam adhesived uh, together. So yeah, I mean, I can just I can wiggle this. So what that means is if you wanted to relocate this guy, make this whole thing an enormous cubby, that would definitely go. Uh, you probably want to leave this center support and make it like a one and two. But yeah, there's there's really nothing to any of this. Early morning in the shop. Here is where we left off yesterday with the cubby project. So these definitely don't look like much. I was working in the middle of the night with a jigsaw to try and not wake up the neighbors. But each of these has a 90 degree angle and then a feathered angle that I had to bend by hand. So what that wound up meaning was I took thick bar stock and bent them to the 90s and then I used much thinner stock to do the angles. So there's 90, drilled through with self-tapping, then ground them down to flush so you wouldn't be sticking off and rubbing against the vehicle. And there's the other one. So a bit of a hacksaw job, but we're gonna completely cover it with carpet. So if it wasn't for the fact that I was making this a J-O, no one would ever know. The reason I did it that way was there was nowhere to really screw in except for the side supports in the two layers of the wall. Now, what I'll wind up using these cubbies for is probably mostly gonna be my electrical system. So what I'll wind up doing is showing that later, but for now we're gonna cover it in carpet and then later down the road, we'll wind up drilling in and putting in all that stuff. For now, we're going to need a lot of this stuff. This is 3M spray adhesive. I'll put a link in the description where you can buy it from a link that'll give me a couple cents back for making this video. So thanks in advance. So from here on, we're gonna go over just how we're gonna cover everything up. This is one of my favorite tricks for the inside of vans. It's durable, mold resistant. The only real way to get it messed up is heat. You know, I've got like a cigarette burn from one of my friends on the side of my van, but like otherwise I have just pounded the crap out of this stuff for years and it always looks fine. So this is a label, it's an area rug. It's made from recycled plastic, which is also cool. Uh, and you can usually pick it up at any major box store. If I can, I'll put a link below for you. This is the roll I picked up this week from the Home Depot. This is the scrap that I have left over from my van four years ago. So the biggest thing to know about working with this stuff is A, there's a pattern so you can see that the toe goes this way here, this way here. You need to decide up front, are you gonna go horizontal, vertical, what, and stick to it. Otherwise it does look a little goofy. The other thing is if you're gonna use it in large quantity, buy way more than you need ahead of time so you don't wind up in a situation where you got halfway through and then you went to go buy another roll and they don't even come close to matching. So been there, done that, learned from my mistake. At this point, what we're gonna do is basically hide all our mistakes. Whether or not you do a good job making your initial cuts, you are going to wind up doing a little bit of butchery uh, to get it so it can go down and flip in to these cubbies. So spray both sides, give it a second to tack up, and then we are going to lay this in 
roughly centered and I'm going to bias the fabric so it's pretty much flush on the top with a little bit of runoff but a bunch of tag end on the bottom because that's going to loop onto the bottom of the cubby and you're never going to be you know really sticking your head up there to look unless you have a good reason to be so start with your widest surface first and just push down get it really nice into the corners try and keep everything flat don't let anything stand up on you One of the tricks you learn along the way is that there is definitely a right amount and too much uh, spray glue. If you spray too much, it just takes longer for everything to tack up and you wind up having to massage it for longer. So once you get that amount, things go a lot faster. Clearly when I cut this out, I gave myself a ton of slack. Why'd I do that? Well, this whole square costs about a dollar, so I'm not going to waste my time, drive myself crazy over, what, 30 cents of material. That said, there's also a method to the madness. So yeah, the sides here, we don't need. I already know that the edges come flush. So these we're gonna trim close to flush, you know, quarter inch over, just in case there's some sort of gap. But the bottom, we're gonna have to do some basic upholstery magic to to get rid of all this extra fabric so we're going to start by trimming what we know we don't need and then working our way in everything here we're doing is just rough cuts this is just so that it's easier to do it on the bench than it is to do it you know in that cubby so what we're gonna do is look at making this shoot into a corner. If we were gonna do that, it would pinch like that, right? So all of this fabric that's pinched out between my fingers would need to disappear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark that out and go ahead and clip it with a little bit of extra now. There we go. So there's that rough cut for the cubby. Should look sweet. Back out in the van. First one's already in and you can see that just looks plush like it was supposed to be there. Wanted to cover very quickly because I, I realized I glossed right past it how we are screwing these in. So the middle one is super easy, right? We're just gonna go straight into these guys. No problems. Self-tapping screws, call the day. Now, the sides are where it gets interesting. You got one, that angled piece where, okay, same deal. But on the other side, it's just a big empty cavern. So you can see what I did was I grabbed square stock aluminum, uh, one inch by one inch, and just gave myself somewhere to zip screws in. You could use angle, you could use square of a bigger size, probably a good idea. It's gonna be a little tight, but I'll put a link to a good piece of uh, aluminum stock to use and just have around in the uh, description to order. Now, when we were back in the shop, you probably noticed all the insane hatchet jobs I had to do to the original boxes. Trust me, when you're here trying to do this, you'll suddenly realize why I probably spent an hour, no, I did spend an hour just shaving here, shaving there, shaving there until they would go back, down, and slide back in. So let's give her a shot, see if it still works. So up until now with this little pod storage project, everything's been fun and games. Nothing was gonna go wrong that I couldn't just rip out, throw in the dumpster, put everything back, and no one but me would ever know about. But this is where we turn a corner. We gotta start cutting panels. Now, these spots are where the factory foam, uh, let's call it insulation was, not that it was doing anything. This is going to be my template for where I cut out. Now, 
yes, I'm relying on someone who had three seconds to tack it in place and blah, blah, blah. But what I can tell you is that there are very small little markings here, which show me that these actually were accurately placed shockingly accurately placed so what i did was i traced out the rest of where this one should go since it was notched for whatever reason and i'm going to cut in by uh about a quarter inch so i'm going to retrace that to the inside of this and uh give her a go and then i'm going to run to the auto parts store get some black door trim and that'll hide the saw marks and any little nicks and imperfections. So that trimmed out really nicely. It'll come together the rest of the way beautifully. I am now reminded why the jigsaw is my most loathed tool on the planet, but it does what you gotta do. The nice thing about stuff with the jigsaw is you're usually hiding it with something else. So in this case, I am using door edge trim. Yeah. That kind of stuff. I'll put a link below. Eight feet was enough for just the outer two, so you're gonna need about 16 or so like that. I'll put a, a link to the good stuff in the description. You can get it from there. But man, does it just make a huge difference in terms of the look and finish. So here we are again. Almost time to close them up for the very last time. We have a compact powered subwoofer over here a mount for the linear actuator that's going to do the electronic extending bed cargo net to make a nice huge pouch right there and the brain box with all the electronics that power everything in the van there'll be quite a few of these cargo nets by the time i'm done with the door cubbies and everything else but the main point here is buying the right net that has bungees all the way through i'll put a link in the description below for all of these parts subwoofers all the electronics attachments are all being made with these little wire conduit wall hanger things what the hell are they called apparently they're called cable clamps which just doesn't sound right but i'll put a link in for the ones i used for these and then i'm also using them in some of the corners you can just barely see a black one right there to hold everything up and neat and not have it banging around so definitely the magic trick to making this work without protruding so far that the trim will not be flush hopefully this is the last time this is wide open let's see how it looks closed up there we go so now we also have solar input and the 12 volt out for my fridge everything looks sick and this works absolutely perfectly so perfect spot to quickly jam your jacket or your pillow or whatever and uh man i'm just fired up this project totally panned out it took forever because i was doing other things but totally worth it